In this video, we're going to be talking about how to develop a mathematical model or an equation. If you take a look off to the left, we have a distance versus time graph that was developed on Excel that has a few extra labels that I added, but for the most part, we won't be taking a look at any of that until the end of the video. One of the main things that it's displayed on this graph is the formula. So there's a couple little options that you can click to display the formula on your graph. If you're at that point, it's going to be a lot easier to develop your mathematical model. If you don't have some of that data, then you might have to calculate it. Okay, so let's get started. If you take a look at your formula of a line, it's right over here, y equals mx plus b, which should sound familiar to most of you. Those four variables are very general representations of those variables. So what you want to do is substitute specific words or numbers instead of those values. For example, instead of writing y, we know the y variable is distance. So we're going to go ahead and write the word distance. Because that is our y variable. That's our dependent variable that's displayed on the y axis. Secondly, we're going to take our m, which is slope, and replace it with a specific number because we already know our slope is displayed right over here. It's negative 1.5. Okay, just like most other numbers, they have to be followed with units. So if we go back to the, our, our formula for slope, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So because we're taking some y values and subtracting them up top, we're going to grab our y units and put it on top. And then we divide our y units by our x units, our x2 minus x1 on the bottom. So we're going to end up with the x units on the bottom. Anytime you develop a unit for a slope, it's always going to be something over something. So it's all you see your y units divided by your x units. Okay, so now we've got our y variable and our slope. Next, we can move on to our x variable. Our x variable is time right over there. And our very last component is B, which is our Y intercept. Our Y intercept is 20 as shown by our formula right over there. We're going to write 20. And just as we did with the slope, we're going to follow that with units because it's a Y intercept. We're going to grab the units from the Y axis, which is meters. Okay, so that concludes how to develop your mathematical model if you have the formula on the graph already. Now, the only difference would be if you didn't have that, you would have to calculate your slope and locate your y-intercept. Okay, let's start with the y-intercept because that's pretty simple. You basically take a look at where your line intercepts the y-axis, where the value of x equals zero. So nothing too complicated. We're going to take a look at our y-axis, which is right over here. We can clearly see that the line bumps into it right over there. And then we see the value of 20 right next to it. The thing that would take a little bit more time calculating is our slope, but that's not real difficult either. You just want to make sure you use this formula right here and grab all the variables from the graph. So I already did a couple of those steps beforehand. I grabbed my last data point and label it. And I grab my first data point and label it. And then I'm going to calculate the slope from there, okay, which is going to look something like this. So all I did was I took a look at some of the work that I did earlier, which is labeling everything from my last data point and my first data point and basically plugging into this formula right here, taking my Y2 minus Y1, which gave me negative 15 meters. And I took my X2 minus X1, subtracted those, that gave me 10 seconds, negative 15 meters divided by 10 seconds gave us our negative 1.5 meters per second. Okay, so that concludes on how to develop your mathematical model. Thank you for watching and listening.